Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to use static methods in classes. Now, a static method is basically just a method that belongs to the class itself. So a lot of times when we create methods inside of our uh, C Sharp classes, usually those methods will be used on objects. So um, we could have an object of a specific class and then that object could use those methods to you know, do different things. Um, but a static method in a class is a method that belongs to the actual class, which means you don't have to create an object of that class in order to use it and access it. And these can be extremely useful. And there's a lot of circumstances where you'd want to create classes that have static methods inside of them. So I'm going to show you guys um, basically how that works. Now down here, you'll see that I have this little line. It just says console.write line. And then over here, I'm saying math.square root 144. Right. Essentially what's happening here is there's this class in C sharp, which is called math. And inside of that math class, there's a bunch of these methods. Now, one thing you'll notice here, when I went to access this square root method inside the math class, I didn't have to create an instance of the math class. Now, normally up to this point in the course, whenever we wanted to use a class or use any of the functionality that a class described, we had to create an object. So I would have to say like math, my math is equal to new math, right? I'd have to create an actual instance of the math class like that. But you'll notice that down here, I didn't have to do that, right? In fact, when I try to create an instance of the math class, I'm getting this error over here. And so down here, I can basically just say math dot square root and I'm able to use this method without having to create an instance of the math class. And this is an example of a static method. So a static method, like I said, it's a method that belongs to the class, which means we don't have to create an instance of the class in order to use it. So I could go ahead and run this program and we should get back the square root of 144. So we should get back 12. I'm going to show you guys how we can do this and how we could basically create something similar to the math class. So up here, I'm going to create a new class and um, you can either come over here, right click, and go to add and then click new item. Or we can also go up here and we can click project and click add class. So I'm going to do it this way. And then over here, you can see I'm just clicking on class. And why don't we just call this useful tools. So this is going to be our useful tools class. And you'll see over here that I basically just have class useful tools. And inside of this class, if I wanted to create static methods, all I have to do is come down here and I could just say like public static and I could create a method. So why don't we create one called say hi and it's going to take one parameter. So it's going to take a string name and then we will basically just have this say hi. So it's going to console dot write line and we're just going to print out hello name and actually whoops forgot to put a return type here. So this should be void. So public static void say hi string name and it just prints out hello to whatever name gets passed in extremely simple um, method over there. And so what I could do is I could actually come down here and I could access that method directly without creating an instance of the useful tools class. So down here, I can just get rid of this and we could just go ahead and call this directly. So I could say useful tools dot say hi. So I didn't actually have to create an instance of the useful tools class. All I, all I did was just access this method directly. So I could pass in my name like Mike, and now we'll be able to run this method without having to create an instance of the useful tools class. You can see over there, everything's running just fine. Now this is an extremely useful thing. So what you could actually do is you could create a class over here and it could just be contained of, you know, these static methods. And that's essentially what that math class is that we looked at before. The math class is basically just a class that has a bunch of these static methods inside of it that are used to do different things. So if you just have a normal class, you know, maybe a class that's modeling some sort of real world entity, um, you can include static methods inside of there. And then the callers don't have to create instances of that class in order to use them. Another thing you could do is set up a class that is solely designed for this purpose. So for example, that math class, that math class is actually what's called a static class. So you'll notice when I tried to create a instance of that math class before I said like math, my math, is equal to new math. I'm not actually able to create an instance of the math class. You'll see I'm getting an error here. And this is because 
the math class is a static class, which means you can't create an instance of it. Um, but you'll notice with this useful tools class, I could create an instance of it and it's gonna be no problem. So like this is actually like a useful tools object. So in certain circumstances, you're gonna wanna do that. Like you're gonna wanna be able to have a class with static methods that can have an object created of it. But in situations like with that math class, you're not gonna wanna do that. So what you can do is you can come over here and we could just say static class useful tools. And now we're not gonna be able to create an instance of the useful tools class. So you'll see down here, I'm getting this error now. Basically says, cannot declare a variable of static type useful tools. And then over here it says, cannot create an instance of the static class useful tools. So that's sort of like two different ways that you can use this. But these static methods are extremely useful. And like I said, there's a lot of situations where you're gonna want to use them, basically just to define functionality on the class level instead of on the individual object level. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.